Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. Uh, my name's John. I run the uh, Double O Rail channel. Uh, you may or may not have seen my face uh, so often on the channel, but anyway. Uh, so today's video is a little bit different. Um, it's been a long time since I've really done any kind of serious effort on a layout, as you can probably tell from the lack of layout updates. Uh, one of the things that I'm wanting to do uh, with the layout is 3D print a lot of stuff. So you can probably see me uh, show various 3D printed items. So um, we actually have a pretty decent 3D printer setup. Got a couple of you know a dozen or so 3D printers, and um, we have them working on printing various projects that we've custom designed. So I'm hoping that over the next couple of weeks, uh, you'll see some drastic improvements on the layout. However, it's one thing to actually have the stuff that's 3D printed, um, and it's totally another thing to actually go and have the time to put it on the layout. Um, so I don't know if, like me, but I um, mean, I've got three kids, they go to school, they have hockey, they have all sorts of stuff. So um, it can, you know, eat up a fair amount of time and then you got work on top of that as well. So I thought I'd put together a new series where I basically show you guys um, a new, well, a new technique, but a technique that they use in Japan called Kaizen. And basically the idea is that you spend a small amount of time every day uh, working on a project or different projects uh, that are kind of part of the same goal. So I'm gonna to try to apply that um, to the mall railway here. Um, so what I've done is I'm gonna start this new series called uh, 15 minutes for modeling. And every day I'm gonna spend 15 minutes um, basically introducing you guys to a different part of the layout and doing some project that I've put off for, for far too long. So today's 15 minute project, which I'm gonna start when I'm done introducing this, is basically over here in this corner, uh, we have a section where the track is just too close. I was kinda of lazy when I laid the track and it sorta of needs fixed. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to actually going to go ahead and fix that and show you some cool 3D printed tools um, that I created while to basically help me do that. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope it guys maybe inspires you to uh, you know take 15 minutes out of your day uh, to work on your layout rather than doing what I've been doing for years, uh, which is sort of going, yeah, I've got tons of stuff to do. I'm just going to put it off until I have like three or four hours time to actually go work on it. And then I never really get the three or four hours time and then more and more projects pile up and nothing gets done. Um, so I thought I'd try a different technique and this uh, Kaizen principle seems to work really really well uh, It's been used in the Japanese automotive industry as well as other industries over there uh, So I thought I'd give it a go. All right, so uh, without further ado, we're gonna get All right, so this is basically the section of the layout uh, that was behind me while I was talking a few seconds ago I've got myself a cup of tea and I set it off to the side and I'm gonna start working on the layout so um, to give us 15 minutes, I'm going to use an Amazon Echo Dot. So um, Alexa, give me a 15 minute timer. 15 minutes, starting now. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So this section of the layout has a bit of a problem. I'll give you a quick reason as to why this layout has a problem. Uh, basically, these two tracks here are um, the slow down, uh, up and down lines uh, for the main part of the layout. And they're too close together. Um, I basically use set track, and um, I kind of didn't really care at the time because I was sending trains back and forth. Uh, but now that I've got more trains that I want to go and put into place uh, and run you know, more trains at a time, uh, it, it could become a bit of a problem. Um, now these two tracks are actually uh, pretty okay. They'll, you get like two Mach 4 coaches without any problems. Um, but you can see here there's a big huge uh, space so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically leave this line where it is because I can't really do much with it. I'm going to remove these two lines and basically regrade this um, with the the track over there. But just to show you what the problem is, if I take um, this coach here, for example, and I move this coach beside it, you can see they basically hit each other until this coach hits comes out of the curve. So what can happen? Is if I got two trains going, I'm not paying attention. You're gonna have smash and probably, you know, depending on how fast they're going and the weight between them, uh, you're gonna have them derail. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go and get started. I've got uh, two pieces of uh, cement, uh, concrete uh, flex track, and I've got a couple of tools. So we've got um, this. Uh, screwdriver here which is going to help us lift up the track. I've got a pair of snips in case the track gets real stubborn. 
a uh, handy Swiss Army knife that gives me a couple of different tools, and the main tool I'll be using today, which is a pliers to pull up the track pins. Now, if you've glued your track down and you want to uh, do something similar, uh, you're straight out of luck. Uh, you're gonna have to try to uh, remove that glue somehow and scrape and, and try to pull the track and um, I typically uh, pin the track down and the only glue that I normally use on the track is when I do the ballasting over the top with, with PVA glue and the reason for that is uh, years and years ago uh, you can actually just dilute the PVA glue mix by adding water and you can actually pull the track and the ballast up and then uh, pull those pins out and basically reuse the track um, so that's kind of why that approach is probably used in the first place all right, so without me um, waffling on any further, except I lost a couple of minutes now, um, I'm going to go and get cracking on this, and hopefully we get it done in the 15 minutes. All right, so we got one track pin now. Usually when you get the first one going, uh, the rest sort of hopefully come out a little bit faster. We'll see. Luckily, I didn't use too many track pants. So I found a good uh, technique for this is to take the pliers, pull it on either side of the sleeper and like this, and basically just uh, try to pull the sleeper up enough that it then leaves enough that you can either get a screwdriver under it. Get a screwdriver under it and pry it out, like so. And when you get it up enough, you can grab onto the end of it with ah. Now one thing is, I did weather this track, which I'm now regretting. Hey, it's all right, no big deal. So that might be a quick time to. Grab a quick drink of tea and uh, continue on. Um, now I'm going to take the track out uh, right to the end here. Was a lot easier than I thought. All right, so that's our first piece of track out. Um, actually, it's not coated because this piece over here has to be removed as well. So, I'm not sure if you can see. I think it might be off camera. I uh, just remove the camera over a little bit here. Now you can see the curve continued in over here, so you're going to very carefully Okay, that's the last one. And in case you're wondering, uh, this is uh, Atlas 22 radius uh, track. So I tend to use a mix. It's basically the equivalent of a third radius, I think. Uh, but basically, I use a mix of of Atlas and Hornby and Pico track, uh, whatever I really can get my hands on. Uh, so you can see here now we have this. Um, it's been completely uh, pulled out. And then we're going to do the same for the other track that's over here. Um, again, we're going to use the same technique. Uh, hopefully I'm not running out of too much time. 
Uh, now your feedback would be real appreciated on this video. Uh, so if this is something you guys want to see more of, um, I'm going to keep doing this anyway because I need to get the layout done and I'll keep uploading it. Um, but if you'd want to see me like speed this stuff up or if you'd want to sit here for 15 minutes and watch me pull this rock out of the um, thing, let me know. Uh, I can always do a kind of sped up five minute express version or something. Um, so whatever you guys think, I guess I could always talk and ramble on while I do this about something. So, uh, let's see. This week, I guess I could talk about people's YouTube videos I watched this week. Um, so Jenny Kirk had a pretty good video on trees. Uh, we're, we're, that's worth checking out. Uh, I'll stick a link in the uh, description above. Uh, see, other videos I watched uh, this week, I watched uh, Dave over at Cotsmore. He has a nice video on his uh, pretty decent deal he got on a Arriva. Um, I think it's class 121 or 122. It's one of those two. I think it's probably 121. Um, I actually have two of the Bior ones from Daypol, they're, they're pretty good. Um, so, yeah, there it goes, it's coming out. Uh, so one piece of track down. And I'll salvage the uh, various different pieces off of this when I'm done. So we can salvage the track pans, the track is more than likely salvageable. And uh, the fish plates for sure is are salvageable. Um, you can sometimes break the track, and uh, sometimes you can break the fish plates. These are those fatless ones that I don't really like anyway. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's see how we're doing for time. Um, Alexa, uh, how much time is left in the timer? You have 4 minutes and 50 seconds left on your 15 minutes timer. Well, I'll better hurry up. Uh, so with 4 minutes left, I'm not going to probably get the whole track down. Uh, but we'll try. Yeah, there we go. That's that done. Uh, let's see. So, other videos I watched this week. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I watched. Uh, Right, just a couple more. There was one by uh, Susanna, she had a pretty good one last week about uh, doing back scenes uh, with some uh, spray paint cans. It looked uh, a pretty cool result that she got, so let's, uh, check that out if you get a chance. Uh, let's see. Uh, Double O Rail had a really cool video on uh, 3D printing, if you haven't uh, seen that one already. Uh, that's a shameless plug there uh, as I try to get through these. Okay, that's that one down. Of course, it's going to be problematic. Uh. Let's see what else has been going on. So, we got some pretty cool stuff in the works at Double Rail. Uh, got obviously, the uh, Upcoming advent calendar. If you haven't seen our advent calendars from previous years, you can go check it out. Uh, basically, we have trains running around uh, to Christmas music and uh, other holiday music. It's uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, man, this really doesn't want to come out. Um, ah, we have uh, some 3D printed projects going on. I, know I did a wood PLA video, I think that's the one we plugged earlier. Um, but uh, I did a, a coal state, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, basically like a kind of fancy coal bunker. Uh, so we did those in wood PLA and those turned out really, really nice. Um, so we'll definitely be making those available to people to download uh, later on in the month. Uh, so that's that one done. I think I'm not going to get uh, all the track down in 15 minutes, but I might be able to get at least one section on track down in 15 minutes. Uh, or at least all the track up. Um, so if I... Uh, Move the camera around a little bit more. You'll be able to see what's going on over here. I uh, still have looks a bit two track pins left, so I'm sure this is not going to go favorably. Uh, well, maybe not. I jinxed myself by saying that. Um, anyway, so last but not least, I think the camera's in the way now. Uh, to get to that, but I will, if I knock the camera, I do apologize. Let me 
like some people are seasick, but uh, I guess I should have had some talking points when I, uh, before I started this video. And I just kind of came up with the idea this afternoon. I was like, eh, maybe I should try this. Um, so, all right. So you can see there we bent the fish plates a little bit. We'll just remove those. Uh, so you just take the pliers and pull those off. Not a big deal. All right. Ah, well, now, now I'm gonna have a track pin that doesn't wanna come out. Um, okay. And of course the track pin broke. So to fix this, I'm just gonna take the pliers and shove the track pin into the baseboard and not worry about it. All right, so next up, we want to redo this track. So we want to put the track basically at an angle where it's still gonna end up over here. And there's another track pin in there. Um, but it's gonna take it further away from the other track so that we can, yeah, there we go, that one without breaking it. All right, so I um, wanted to show you this piece here. Um, basically, um, when I pull the track up, you can see um, the track, the pin, the the force of me pulling all the track pin basically pulled uh, some of the rails out, mainly because this I think was kind of glued down because of the paint. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically use a Dremel tool and cut it here and here, and basically um, sort of uh, you know extend the flex track uh, down to about here, and that will take care of this kind of mess. Okay, so um, first thing I'm going to do is just move this stuff out of the way. So we're going to move the track pins over here. And I am going to go and uh, put this in place. So first of all, we're going to take the bit of flex track that we're going to use here. And I'm going to flick it over. And I'm going to take um, just the snips. You could use a pen knife, but um, it's just faster to use the snips here. I'm just going to cut those uh, two there off. And you can see... Basically, every two are connected on with just one side, so you can snip these, snip these off, and then uh, save them because you can always use them later uh, or shove them under the truck, whatever. Um, the next thing I'm going to need to do is get uh, two fish plates, and I'm going to try to recycle the ones that are on here. Not that I'm short of them or anything, but um, since they're here, I can uh, just recycle them. So we're going to go and put that on on there like so and then we're going to put the other one um, beside it like that okay so what I'm going to do is basically uh, bend the track a little bit uh, like so and it will want to do crazy stuff like this um, and we have to pull on it So, make sure you gri grip the thing at the base. Uh, you don't want to mess up the rail on the top, that's for sure. And then what I normally do is just uh, sort of try to push some of these down. Uh, like so, you can find the one where it's... Oops, you don't want to do too well. Um, uh, the easiest way to do this, yeah, we'll cut it here. that later be fine for now all right so that in place we're now going to figure out our curve um, that we want to use so we want to try to eat up uh, more of this uh, curve if possible without causing the same problems that we had um, before uh, we also want to make sure that this end stays connected on there so okay so to end up doing is probably something like this uh, so 
what you need to do next is basically have track pins on hand, which I don't have, and, and nail them into place. So I'm going to go uh, grab the track pin. I'm probably running out of time anyway. Um, and we will continue. Right, so we've got this in place, um, but we're rapidly uh, running out of time here. So um, what we got going on, and the main thing about the suits, you don't have to rush these projects. You can do it over, uh, you know, two days. If you've got some time, you can always you know, double up your, your, your 15 minutes, whatever. So um, what I've got here is I've got the track in place and it's looking pretty okay on the other side. Um, I've got it kind of uh, weighted down here with my uh, cup of tea and a pair of pliers. And so what I'm gonna do next is basically just, um, this is the part that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna go and secure it down with the drill here. Uh, we're gonna take the drill and drill into the sleeper and then a little bit into the baseboard below it and you can sort of feel when it hits it in there and then we're going to just twist this out like so and this is a hand drill uh, if you don't have one of these um, I'll add it to the uh, to the store um, we have Amazon stores so for example if you go to um, any of the two links or you go to I think it's like uh, double rail uh, .co.uk slash shop I think and um, you'll be able to actually uh, go to our Amazon store and we don't make a lot of money off of that but you know it helps run the channel um, every so often so kind of might, might pay for the tool that we use or whatnot. Um, so these are um, just wire bra brads uh, you can use uh, actual track pins if you want I got these at Lowe's uh, they're an awful lot cheaper and they do the same job. Um, and all you have to do is just take the tack hammer like so and secure it and it's good to go. And so we'll keep doing that uh, all the way around, well, every couple of sleepers uh, until we've got it somewhat secured. Now I don't usually secure it too much um, until I'm kind of, you know, absolutely sure that's where it's going in. Otherwise you end up with uh, what you saw me do there, which was, um, you know, spend 10 minutes trying to take track out, which is never fun. And okay, so it started enough there. We'll take another one of these wire brads. I think these things are for pitcher hooks. Um, you can see here, uh, they cost like $2 if that at Lowe's and you get like, what? Uh, 1.75 ounces, like, you know, way more than what you get in a thing of Mulroy track pens, that's for sure. And then we'll take the tack hammer again, and then like so. And then, all right. So there's Alexa telling me I'm done for the day. So um, I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy tomorrow's video as well. All right. Until next time, Alexa, cancel the timer.